Located in a prominent mountain town hours away from Denver in the Continental Divide, Steamboat has long been a go-to alpine destination. The resort doesn't offer the bowl skiing, size, or extreme terrain that the best Colorado mountains are known for. Instead, it provides acres of tree skiing and mobile runs. The resort offers plenty of enjoyable terrain, but is it worth the extra drive? In this video, we'll go through Steamboat's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go through how the resort stacks up in our overall rankings. If you find this information helpful, be sure to like this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And if you haven't already, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, where you can follow along as we travel around the peaks and share our first impressions before they ever make it up in our videos. Steamboat's snow quality is a strong point. The resort gets as much snow as the best resorts in Colorado, and regularly sees powder each season. Since Steamboat is northwest of most of the popular mountains in the state, it can get hit by storms that never even make it to the front range, although the opposite effect can happen as well. It takes less time to acclimate to the altitude than you might expect here. The resort tops out at only 10,568 feet, thousands of feet lower than other Colorado ski areas. Steamboat's long vertical drop means that lower elevation trails see more variable conditions than the rest, but extensive early season snowmaking operations ensure a resilient base layer throughout the season. Steamboat's snowfall contributes significantly to its strongest asset, its top tier tree skiing. On-site woods, of which there are an abundance since most of Steamboat is below tree line, tend to have enough snow and spacing to consistently work as glades throughout the season. There are glades for skiers of various abilities at Steamboat, from moderately sloped blues to consistently steep blacks. It takes a long time for the snow in the trees to get tracked, and it's possible to find powder stashes in the trees even days after a snowstorm. Steamboat's aspen trees, which line trails and make up a sizable chunk of glade terrain, give the resort a distinct look. These light tan trees are widely spaced and don't have as many low-hanging branches as pine trees, making them easier to navigate and carve lines through than typical glades. Outside of the trees, Steamboat boasts a mix of beginner to advanced slopes that many groups will appreciate. Steamboat's beginner experience has always been on the better side as far as Colorado resorts go, as its Sunshine Peak area boasts upper mountain green terrain, something that many competitors lack but the resort's beginner experience has seen a significant upgrade this winter, with a new isolated mid-mountain learning area that's served by a dedicated carpet and a brand new high-speed quad. Steamboat offers a range of blue terrain in essentially every mountain area. These runs boast moderately steep pitches and often feature some of the best views at the resort. Steamboat also features a blue-black trail rating where runs are a bit steeper than typical blues, but not quite up to an advanced level pitch or technicality. However, grooming on Steamboat's blues can be a bit hit or miss depending on when you visit. On some days, carvable groomers are ample in quantity, while on others, groomed blue terrain is nary a sight, with some degree of bumps really difficult to avoid no matter where you go. It generally seems that fewer runs get groomed if it's snowed, even if accumulation numbers are small, but for an in-advanced trip, it's hard to predict when grooming will be good or not. This can be especially frustrating given Steamboat's family-friendly reputation. Speaking of bumps, Steamboat's advanced level trails tend to have them in spades. These runs are reasonably steep and demanding, and repeat laps will wear down any typical guest. Visitors will want to check out the Storm Peak, Sundown, and Pony Express lifts for the best black runs, and many of these trails are directly adjacent to the best glades at the resort. If conditions permit, some of the blacks off Sunshine Peak and near the bottom of the mountain receive grooming, allowing for some serious speed runs. Steamboat's terrain footprint starts to show its shortcomings in the high alpine department. The back bowls at Morningside Park feel also ran for what you might expect from a resort of this caliber. Snow quality tends to be good, but above treeline skiing continues really only for the first few turns, and steep slopes only continue for the next couple after that. After that, you're subject to flat terrain that on powdery days requires a pretty annoying catwalk. Once you get to the bottom, you're stuck taking the slow, fixed grip morning side lift to get back up. The Christmas tree shoots and a few hikeable areas north of them are the only areas of the resort with true expert terrain, including cliffs and some dangerously steep pitches. While thrilling for experts, they're very difficult to find. You have to travel to the top, ski down the backside, and take the morning side lift just to get there, even though they're on the front face of the mountain. In addition, just as at Morningside Park, 
the expert level terrain doesn't last very long and mellows out fairly quickly. Many other big Colorado resorts offer more. The lift and navigation logistics at Steamboat suffer from a few other shortcomings. Access to the resort comes from just one base area, and all visitors coming from the base have to go through the same midpoint, the Thunderhead Lodge, to get to any other area of the resort. The eight-person Steamboat Gondola offers the only direct service from the base to this midpoint. While a capacity upgrade in recent seasons has significantly reduced congestion, the lift is still often subject to really long lines, especially in the morning. The more indirect Christy Peak to Thunderhead Express lift setup requires a time-consuming detour between lifts, but is typically less crowded. Although even if lines are short at the Christie lift, things can still jam up at Thunderhead, which just delays the bottleneck. If you're not looking to spend your day at the base lifts, and most people won't be due to the large crowds, it'll take a while to get to the runs you want to do. For the 2022-23 season, Steamboat installed the first leg of its 10-passenger Wild Blue Gondola, a crucial lift that will eventually extend all the way to the top of Sunshine Peak. But for now, the lift only extends to the new learning area mentioned earlier. The first stage of the gondola doesn't really solve Steamboat's choke point issues at this point in time, but it does provide a slightly more direct, insulated route from the base to Thunderhead and frees up the Christie Express lift for race training and freestyle use. Steamboat's lower mountain lift setup also causes problems getting back to the base. Ski out access is notably limited, which can be really frustrating. If you're north of the Thunderhead Lodge, you either need to take a long, flat green trail to get down, or take the Burgess Creek lift to get down a more enjoyable way. If you're south of there in the Sunshine Peak area, there's no intuitive direct option to get down to the base. If you're not an advanced level skier and you don't know exactly what you're doing, you'll be forced to take the Elkhead Express lift before you can get to trails where you can actually ski to the base. The Elkhead lift provides a phenomenally better experience than the fixed grip lift it replaced a couple of years ago, but be prepared to wait in a very long line if you're stuck there at the end of the day. Don't even think about taking a leisurely last run in this area at 3.30pm and risk missing the last chair up. But getting around Steamboat isn't all bad. It's easy to lap most of the resort's signature tree terrain once you get to it. In addition, all mountain areas besides those served by the Morningside lift benefit from available high-speed lift service. And thankfully, mid-mountain lodges allow you to catch a break during the day without heading all the way down to the base. Steamboat's mountain aesthetic generally impresses, although the flat summit areas won't match the tops you'll find at other Colorado resorts. Upper mountain areas offer picturesque views of the valley and neighboring peaks, and you won't find the same aspen tree landscapes anywhere else. While the Steamboat Village is fairly built up, the fairly inset rest of the mountain doesn't have much development on it at all. It's also worth noting that Steamboat offers night skiing on a small portion of its terrain. While it's only five trails, it's better than nothing and a useful option for those wanting to hit the slopes later in the day. Where Steamboat really stands out is in its town. Steamboat Springs is a real town. It's not an artificial village that was constructed with the resort, and it offers multiple bars, breweries, and small clubs, with options ranging from casual to lively. You can find live music and dancing most nights of the week, but the best partying happens on weekends. But you don't have to go directly into town to have a good time off the slopes. The Steamboat Base boasts an excellent Opry ski climate, with multiple slopeside happy hour bars that offer sweet food and drink deals. The resort often features live music at the base after the mountain closes, especially closer to the spring. When it comes to lodging, Steamboat offers multiple options both on-site and in town. Most hotels and condos at the base come with hot tubs and pools. Some nice options near the base are reasonably priced, provided you have a large enough group, and within walking distance of base village attractions. Lodging in the town of Steamboat Springs is reasonably economical and centrally located for nightlife, but it's more than a mile away from the base. Buses to and from the resort run every 20 minutes during the day and every 30 minutes in the evening. There is some free public parking at the resort, but in most cases, you either have to walk a few minutes to get to the slopes or take a shuttle bus. In the case of the Meadows parking lot, there is a Pulse gondola nearby, but its low capacity results in long lines that often make it slower than just waiting for the shuttle. Steamboat's free lots fill up on busy days, so if you get there after 10 on a weekend or holiday, prepare to shell out money for a paid spot. So Steamboat offers a bustling town, enjoyable slopes, and world-class tree and mogul skiing. However, 
Other mountains in Colorado provide more diverse terrain, better resort logistics, and significantly easier access from Denver. As a result, a lot of vacation goers, especially experts and those looking for bull terrain, may want to look elsewhere. Another reason to avoid Steamboat is the resort's absolutely insane ticket prices. For the 2022-23 season, ticket rates top out at $275, among the highest anywhere in North America. Tickets can be had for less than $200 if you buy really far in advance for an off-peak weekday, but with a starting rate of $177, they're by no means cheap. Now, Steamboat's ticket rates might be a bit easier to justify if it had the best terrain in North America, but with its lacking expert in bull terrain and not insignificant crowding problems, the resort has no business charging such astronomical prices. Steamboat is on the Icon Pass, and these days, it's really only worth visiting if you have such a product. Now let's go through how Steamboat stacks up in our overall rankings, which are determined by the following 10 category mountain score. Steamboat receives similar high quality accumulation to its Colorado Front Range brethren, and the resort gets an 8 for snow. Steamboat's mellower footprint often allows it to open in full faster than other Rockies mountains, but its lower elevation does impact snow retention somewhat, and the resort gets an 8 for resiliency. Steamboat boasts a 2,965 acre footprint, earning it an 8 for size. Steamboat checks off all the boxes for beginner to advance below treeline terrain, but lacks an expert in bull slopes and gets a 7 for terrain diversity. Steamboat's mogul runs take a lot out of you, and their expert lines are admittedly difficult, but the double black terrain is really hard to spend time in, and the resort gets a 7 for challenge. Steamboat boasts high speed lift service everywhere except for Morningside, but this backside area is surprisingly critical for resort flow, and the resort gets a 7 for lifts. Steamboat doesn't see the same raw traffic as some Colorado mountains, but it's home to several serious choke points, and the resort gets a 4 for crowd flow. On mountain facilities are nice, and while they do fill up on busy weekends and holidays, they're convenient enough, and the resort gets a 7 for facilities. Steamboat isn't bad to get around once you reach the upper mountain, but getting up and down the resort, as well as to certain mountain areas, can be a huge pain, and the resort gets a 5 for navigation. And finally, mountain aesthetic. Steamboat's trees provide unparalleled vibes on the right day, but the resort's mellow footprint and flat summit detract from the big mountain feel that almost every other Rockies mountain encompasses so well, and the resort gets a 6 for mountain aesthetic. These categories add up to an overall score of 67, placing Steamboat 12th in Colorado and 36th overall. Steamboat really isn't a bad mountain. It genuinely has a lot going for it, but it faces some really stiff competition, and by falling short in two or three areas, it scores behind nearly every other destination resort in the state. Still, if you care more about the town, or you happen to find out that Steamboat is getting a storm that's passing over the Front Range Mountains, provided you have an Icon Pass, the mountain isn't a terrible way to go. It's also worth noting that Steamboat has several lift, terrain, and facilities projects in flight that are designed to address many of its shortcomings in the next few years, so we wouldn't be surprised to see the resort make its way up the ranks, even as early as next season. For more information on Steamboat and over 75 North American ski resort destinations, check out peakrankings.com. See you for the next one.